everyone. Brandon here with GDNT Basics Question Line, and today's topic is when to use DML straightness. In this question, Dave asks, should I be using DML straightness instead of surface straightness? I've included a drawing example of each one. Up on the top, we just have 40 microns of surface straightness applied directly to the surface there. Um, we have an MMC 16.04, LMC 15.89. So pretty common call out here. Down on the bottom, um, we have MMC of 16, LMC of 15.89. So same LMCs on the two, um, but I do have the feature control frame applied directly to the size dimension. So that tells us that it is derived median line straightness control now. A lot of people say that that's an axis control. Um, remember an axis is perfectly straight. Nowhere in the standard does it state that it's a, an axis control. It is a derived median line, or you'll see it referred to as DML. So when it comes to when we should apply one over the other, definitely up on the top. Um, this is when the amount of straightness that we would get out of rule number one, which would be 150 microns, um, if we did not have this applied to the drawing. Um, we see the refinement when it is applied to the drawing. It's telling us that the design can't tolerate that 150 microns of surface straightness that we would get. So this application here on the top, we do call that refinement of rule number one. We have to warn engineers, don't apply these form controls unless you truly need it for your design um, in order for your, your part or features to function. Rule number one is giving you those form controls um, in there by default. Down on the bottom, this one, like I said, it is trying to control um, the derived median line. Um, I tell engineers when you use this one, um, make sure you understand why you're applying that um, to this in the first place. Um, the big thing is, is that when we see feature of size straightness, um, we are advised or it's recommended that we use the MMC modifier, which uh, this one does have it in there. It's the way they show it in the standard. You can use this at RFS and also um, at LMC. The two examples that I have here, um, they are pulled right out of ASME Y14.5 2009. Um, so figures 5.1, which would be this one up here, and then figure 5.3, which is this one down here. So if you did want to go in there and, and look at um, how they define it, how they show it, um, they have little tables in there for the bottom one anyway, um, of how you gain uh, what we call bonus tolerance. So going back to that design intent, when we look at the tolerances we're going to apply, and this is supposed to be for all of GD&T, um, one of the considerations is how will it be inspected? Um, it's not your only consideration. Remember, uh, we do do this based off of actual needs, but when it comes to the bottom one, feature of size straightness, well, at RFS, that's that's a very complicated thing to inspect. Um, with the MMC modifier, um, you'll hear everybody talk about uh, this one right here. The intent is to be able to functionally gauge it. Um, and, and that's true. Uh, oftentimes, or more often than not, when you see that, the intent is to use a functional gauge for it. So real quick, the one up on the top. Let's look at the, the it's not a functional gauge for that one. This is a go gauge, right? We're all used to go gauges. Um, we go to the maximum material condition size of the feature, which is 16.04. Um, and that is the bore on our gauge. Um, now, remember that um, when it comes to the actual go gauge, and that's what this would be called, is just a simple go gauge. Um, will the pin pass through this ring gauge that we have? Um, that 16.04, the gauge needs tolerance too. Um, in ASME Y14.43, they do recommend using that absolute uh, tolerancing policy for your gauges, which means that any gauge or any tolerance that goes on the gauge it will come from the size tolerance. So we'll rob Peter to pay Paul here on this one. Um, they state that for go gauges. They state that for functional gauging also that um, they recommend that. It's not mandatory. There's other um, like optimistic that you can use. Um, 
but they do want you to use the absolute for your tolerances. Okay, so the one on the top, very, very simple to inspect, right? We just use a, a simple go gauge for that one. On the bottom, um, show the gauge on this one here. It's the same thing. Um, same gauge, I mean, dimensionally, it's the same thing. Um, 16.04, we come over here, we have MMC of 16. We add in the 40 microns, so we get 16.04. Um, you could call this one a go gauge also on the bottom. It is technically referred to as a functional gauge, but not the type of functional gauge that we're used to when we're checking uh, features that have position callouts and other geometric controls. Okay. Um, the one thing I will say is that with that go gauge up on the top, uh, for you engineers, if you're not familiar with the inspections, just remember that the go gauge up on the top, this is not going to verify this. Um, had we not applied this to the drawing, then it is, the go gauge is checking uh, straightness. Um, it can't really check circularity, right? We've talked about that quite a bit before. Um, but it's checking that MMC envelope or rule number one. Um, and it, it is a combination of size and form. But since they do have a refinement of rule number one applied to the drawing, um, this is a, a variable uh, data report that we're going to have for this, meaning that we will have to actually check that straightness. Um, we've talked about this before also, but uh, whenever it comes to that, um, we're going to figure out some way to support this part, looking at it in the manual world, not the CMM. Some way to inspect this part, we'll have to shim either this side or this side. Um, just so that we can come in with a dial indicator and figure out where are our two highest points. And that's just on one element, right? Um, typically, we'll take, we'll rotate this thing uh, three more times. Each time, we may have to shim differently in order to find those two high points. Um, and then we can get a real reading for the actual straightness error. Uh, down there on the bottom, though, with this functional gauge for uh, the feature of size um, straightness, meaning DML straightness, um, well, this is just uh, attribute data on this one. It's pass fail. Um, so it is a it is a very fast, very simple way to inspect these. Um, like I said, th there's other examples of this for RFS in the standard. I believe uh, figure 5.2 It will show you these same numbers, but it's going to show you without the MMC modifier applied to this one. So more complicated on that inspection because when it's RFS, um, now it's whatever size this feature comes in at, add this value to it, right? So you no longer have this simple gauge here. You wind up now with the variable gauge, something that's going to have to expand and contract um, in order to do the inspection on this. Um, in, the, in the manual world, um, I often tell people, both for the top and bottom example, um, consider taking just this pin taking down here on the bottom surface, imagine that we have a granite table and we set it on top of this granite table and then we take a height gauge and we set our height gauge to this limit. Now we're simulating a go gauge. Um, we can do that for the top one and the bottom one because we have that envelope. Um, rotate the part around, spin the part on the granite table, meaning roll it. Um, underneath that gauge on the height uh, or the blade on the height gauge, and that'll tell you whether or not you have a pass fail. Whenever you have RFS down here on the bottom, just remember um, you're going to have to take local measurements, find out what the actual sizes are wherever it comes in, and then add in um, the 40 microns. Okay, down on the bottom um, again. This one, uh, the interesting thing about the one on the bottom is. We're trying to control that DML, right? We're trying to control the bend um, of that center line in there. Um, as the feature gets smaller, obviously we get bonus tolerance and we, it increases um, We up to 150 of bonus that we get to add into that 40, so up to 190 um, on that one. Up on the top, there is no such thing as bonus tolerance and whenever you have surface applications like that, it's just 40, right? Remember that this does require um, that you go down to 16 millimeters in order to even get the 40. Um, and then anything beyond uh, a departure of 40 microns from MMC, you will not gain any more straightness on that one. Um, so definitely the one up on top, it's a tighter control, right? It's uh, 
but if your design needs it, then then by all means, um, put it on there. Okay. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about on this one um, is that consider if we were to take off the 40 here, and now this becomes zero tolerance at MMC. And then let's say up here on the top, we cross this out on our design or our drawing. Um, so up at the top, we just have a simple size dimension. This will be controlling surface straightness all the way up to 150. Um, down here, this one will also. Now, the thing about this one that I need to show is that that 16 with changing this to zero because we had 40 in there. Um, well, this becomes now for an MMC 16.04, just like the top. Um, so this is essentially the same thing. Um, and if you go in and you look, and they have some good examples in there in, in uh, Y14.5, but if you come in and look down on the bottom one, the way that the DML combo um, just depends on how far you depart from maximum material condition, um, the surface up here can bow just the same. So down here and here, you would see the kind of the same result. Um, Jason's done examples before with wasting and barreling. So all of that stuff can happen too. I'm not showing all the different things that can happen to cylinders um, when we get to all these uh, 2D cross checks. But when you look at this one on the bottom and you look at the one on the top, just look at the gauge requirements because the gauges are identical. Um, you do get bonus tolerancing, but um, again, down on the bottom, if we don't use zero tolerance at MMC, and I wipe this back out, now it's back to 16. Well, up here, you get 40 microns more of size tolerance for the manufacturer. Down here, we had to take it away, right? We had to take that 40 away, put it in here, to put it in that feature control frame. Um, so that's what happens with most of our GD&T tolerances is that in order to put something in the feature control frame for features of size other than zero, um, we have to take away size tolerance in order to put it in there. Um, up here, this one is indirectly controlling the DML as well, right? Um, because they're both doing the same thing. Um, even though the way it's defined, the one on the bottom is the RIVE median line. Um, Remember that you could have a, a cone. You could have a perfect taper cone, perfectly straight uh, DML. On that cone, the surfaces would also be perfectly straight um, because they're not oriented to any kind of axis for the tolerance zone up on the top. It's just to the surface elements, whatever size they come in at. Okay. So just wanted to uh, show a quick thing here, just kind of give you a rule of thumb that whenever it comes to these two, um, if you know that you're going to have functional gauges, and I, and I think I point this out too for the one on the bottom, this is a very simple single feature, but imagine that this was some sort of pin or boss where we had a position tolerance on there, um, and then we wanted to come back and do a refinement, put in feature of size straightness for that pin. Just keep in mind that Whatever the position tolerance is, the straightness, uh, the DML straightness tolerance must be smaller than that. Um, so um, on this one here, they say you can make this whatever you want. It does break rule, num rule number one. And that's where I see um, a lot of people using it is where you're putting in a massive amount of uh, form control in there, form tolerance in there far exceeding what rule number one could ever allow. But keep in mind also um, that we could also come in and we could add an independency up here. And then we could make this value anything we wanted also. So these two go uh, very much hand in hand, but um, I think when you get into the functional gauging world, um, the one on the bottom, imagine that you were using a functional gauge and this part was way more complicated and it was going to qualify primary datum feature A, and then you're going to reference A at MMB in feature control frames, um, well, that might be important for you to go ahead and use feature of size straightness um, with the MMC modifier on there because now it's a feature on the gauge with all the other features to be inspected. Um, you can qualify that primary datum feature on that exact same gauge without having to have an independent gauge in order to check it. Okay, guys, take care.
Um, hope this uh, clears things up a little bit. And I didn't give you a direct answer of which one to use. It's really up to you. What does your design require? Um, the one up on the top, surface straightness, if it's going into that bore, again, just remember what the gauges look. That's always helpful for, for design engineers. Imagine what that gauge will look like, even though it's never used. Just imagine what it would look like. Take care, guys. Our goal is to be your best source for gd &T information online. It's important to us that everyone involved in engineering and manufacturing have the chance to learn and better understand gd &T on your prints. We have many free resources to help you get started on your learning journey. Subscribe to our gd &T community using the link in the description below or visit our website. Test your knowledge with our gd &T and print reading quizzes download helpful charts, and access articles written by training experts.